Well, thank you everyone for joining us today. I wanted to talk a little bit about best practices for uh, working remotely. Um, a couple things that I wanted to go over are just uh, about our new normal. Um, some of our um, technical tools that are available um, that you can uh, utilize during this time, and then just some best practices about working remotely as well. So um, I have had a lot of remote working experience. I've actually been working remotely uh, over 12 years, um, both as an employee and as a business owner. I'm a certified records manager, so very um, interested in being able to manage information safely. Um, I've also done a lot of online software training, so I'm very comfortable with being able to uh, teach and, and work over uh, the internet and over um, a remote session. Um, in addition to just being a trainer and being able to do um, a, a lot of that over the internet, I've also presented webinars, which are very um, helpful for business owners who are uh, wanting to talk about their services or their products as well. And over the years, I've gone through um, different platforms, either um, as someone who utilizes them um, from the um, presenter perspective, as well as joining um, different um, platforms um, because my clients may have those. So such as WebEx or Zoom, Teams, um, easy webinar, all different sorts. So there's just uh, different, um, there's commonalities um, that are um, best practices across all those uh, different platforms. And I wanna talk about those today. So uh, as we all know, this is the new normal. Uh, we know that there are restrictions in place as far as um, us being able to uh, meet with others and see our clients or our customers in person. And we know at least it's going to be this way um, to May 1st, um, if not through longer, you know, going through the summer. So it's good to plan and, and um, um, get familiar with this uh, uh, new um, way of being. So even if the restrictions are lifted, clients may still feel um, more comfortable meeting virtual as well. So even if the, the government tells us we can start conducting our business in person, um, there may still be some lag uh, before we actually do that. But for those who normally travel to client or business sites, um, think of the positives that are there. And one of the big positives that I'm hearing again and again is that you're able to save time on travel. So you don't have to go and drive to certain places. Um, I have a client who's out of Philadelphia and he used to travel an hour, hour and a half um, from being out in the outer area to go into the city. Um, and now he doesn't have to worry about that, the parking, and he is more um, productive because he's able to um, use the time um, and for work purposes. But then as far as that commuting time, he now gets that back in his day. So you can think about um, the different advantages now that you can um, put in additional meetings if you want to, um, and be more productive um, uh, during these times. But um, there are other things to keep in mind as well. Um, for those that are working from home, uh, which is a majority of us, um, you may need to leverage both your work duties as well as your home duties. So um, I know in my case, we have our two young girls who are elementary school age, and we have to manage both uh, doing our work activities as well as you know keeping an eye on them. We're starting to prepare for distance learning for them 
uh, next week in the Elk Grove um, School District. So there has to be some leverage, you have to um, build in some time and flexibility um, so that you can do both your work duties and any other home duties that are necessary. So those are just things to keep in mind. So for those who um, are now just setting up a business home office, some of the recommendations that I would give is try your best to find a quiet space where you can um, set up your computer if you don't have one already. Um, if you have a place where you can close the door, um, that would be um, something that's preferable because then uh, you can um, differentiate, especially if you have you know, different family members when maybe you, have, you need some quiet time to talk and do business. Um, for those who are using video like I am today, you want to, of course, dress professional. Um, this, is, um, this is your workplace, so you'll want to um, definitely you know, do the similar kinds of things um, that you'd normally do when you go into the office. The other thing you wanna put in place is make it be a comfortable place. So um, some people are able to work from their kitchen table and then that might be their quiet place. Um, but if you have young kids around, you may not be able to necessarily do that. So you may need to have, say, uh, another area um, that is quiet, get a comfortable chair, uh, make sure that this is a place where you can, you know, be able to do your business when necessary. So once you have your business office um, little, little area put in place, then some of the things you'll want to take into consideration are some of the tools to allow you to continue working remotely. So some of the tools that um, people are using are virtual meeting software, like the one we're on today. So today we're on Zoom. Um, so other platforms that people use are uh, Microsoft Teams. Um, you can use WebEx. There's uh, multiple different software that are available. And later in um, the slides, um, I'll sh um, talk a little bit more of, uh, about those particular ones. You'll also wanna have a stable internet connection. Um, so that means you may need to have, if you, if you uh, don't have internet at home, most of you most likely connecting today have it, but you'll wanna have a stable internet connection. I know that, um, if you are having issues with the connection, um, some things that people have done is making sure to connect directly into your internet versus having Wi-Fi. So if you're finding that your Wi-Fi is starting to not work as well, you may wanna try that. Um, another thing that I've found over the last, um, I would say the last six months, we actually upgraded our Wi-Fi system because um, many people are using lots of different internet connected um, tools nowadays. And so if you're trying to conduct business from home, as well as use your Wi-Fi for any of the other things, like if you have an Alexa at home, you have iPads, you have iPhone, you know, different um, types of things, you may have to upgrade your Wi-Fi. We, that's what we ended up doing so that you can, um, uh, delegate and put under higher priority maybe your business computer versus your kids iPads. So if you're finding that you're on a meeting and it starts sputtering and whatnot, that might be something to, to keep in mind if you haven't upgraded your Wi-Fi in the last um, uh, two years. A webcam is also something that um, you'll want to look into, there are many computers nowadays that already have a built-in one. So if that works for you, um, that's, that's awesome. <clears throat> but for some other people um, who may be doing a lot more training and whatnot on your computer, you may want to invest in a webcam. And so for mine, um, what I'm using today is a Logitech one that's basically just a USB connected into your computer. Um, but in um, these days, you know, just use what you can. 
Um, and then as needed, if you think things need to get upgraded, you know, you can always, you know, add on as necessary. Um, another thing that you may want to consider is um, headphones or a microphone. So if your built-in microphone um, or speakers on your computer are not working very well, um, what you may want to do is invest in a headset. So like, um, let's see if I can pull this out. So today I'm just using the, the one that's um, just in my um, laptop, but if you find that you need to get a headset, you can't really see it very well, um, you can invest in something like that, especially if you have, you know, multiple people, you want to be able to focus, you know, use a headset um, or um, a microphone in order to um, um, be able to uh, get better quality. Um, but for now, I've been using it without so far the last two weeks and things have been going well. Um, the last thing I would say um, is to look into getting remote access to your documents and your databases and software. Um, for those who have been used to uh, conducting businesses within an office, um, this might be a challenge um, because you don't have access to your paper documents, your paper files, um, and um, being able to access things um, as you did in person. So what I'm finding is many people who have um, already invested in maybe a, um, a document management system or maybe a virtual uh, document sharing systems um, have been able to continue on in their businesses um, more quickly than for other organizations. So for example, there's some of my clients are using Dropbox for business. Um, there's other kinds of platforms as well where you can share information between your, um, your different uh, um, office workers and teams. Um, to be able to do that. So people are using, um, as I said, Dropbox for business. Um, other people are using some of the features that are embedded in Microsoft Office, so like OneDrive. Um, and then others may already have a document management system. And um, there might be just some tweaks that are necessary from your IT team to allow people to have remote access to those systems, um, to be able to file away documents, access documents, um, and be able to um, continue to manage your, your business um, from home offices. Um, so uh, definitely things to consider so that you can continue working on your, on your business. So just wanna talk about some best practices about working remotely. So one of the things that you'll wanna do is to understand your virtual platform. So you'll wanna think about, um, understand some of the security settings. Um, so for example, um, Zoom, Zoom, um, there's lots of um, people have been talking about, you know, what are, what are things that you need to make sure are in place um, so that unauthorized people can't come on to a platform such as this. So you want to make sure that, you know, you're, you're sharing um, the link not on your Twitter account to everybody and their mother. You want to make sure that there are only a certain amount of people um, are having access to this, that you have instituted a waiting room so that certain people, you know, only people that you let in can, can have access password. So these are kind of things that you want to understand whatever platform you choose, how do you relic, you know, make sure only those people who should have access have access. Um, you may want to also limit who can share their screen or share their video. And you want to understand um, what are some of the settings that are in place for running a meeting efficiently. So definitely, you know, understand what platform you're using. You'll also want to, if you don't have a background um, that you want to be able to share, because maybe your business office that you've created in your home 
Um, maybe it's not business appropriate or it's messy or something else is happening. You can use a virtual background, which is what I'm using today. Either um, use a virtual background where it's keeping, um, it's basically Zoom creates this um, background where it does almost like a virtual green screen but you can also uh, actually have a green screen. And um, I've done that in the past as well, where you just put it behind you and then it'll project whatever um, background you want to have on that. So um, definitely things to consider. Otherwise, you know, you can always get, um, just uh, fix up your area if you want to um, display yourself on video um, so that it is presentable. The other thing I would say is run a test meeting with another person. Um, I have run a test meeting before with myself and you're only getting 50% of the perspective. You really need to have another person on there being able to um, kind of run, do a run through so that um, we know or you know that your speakers are working, your video is working, um, that you're able to share appropriately. So you definitely want to do that. Um, if you're going to do this regularly um, as a part of your business, you'll want to think about having more than one monitor. Um, because what I find is that having multiple monitors allows you to share one screen and then have maybe your notes on another screen or maybe you need to access something that's more confidential that you don't want to show everybody on a meeting. So definitely having more than one screen, more than one monitor is going to be helpful um, in those cases. You'll also want to listen, listen during your meetings. Um, I've run, I've been using Zoom particularly for over five years. Um, most of my business is done on these virtual meetings. And most of mine are client meetings. And there's differences between meeting somebody in person and doing a virtual meeting. And so one of the main things that I note is that if you're not doing video and you're just doing it um, audio, it's, it's like talking to somebody on the phone. You don't see their face. Um, you're not able to get as much um, uh, feedback um, from a virtual meeting, especially if you're not doing video. So one of the things that I tend to do is I am always checking in with the other person to make sure that I'm understanding what they say. So when I listen during meetings, I often repeat what the other person says to make sure that one, that I understood them correctly, um, and that two, that um, that we are communicating effectively, that we are, you know, our attention is still on each other. So you wanna make sure that you're confirming. Um, if you're not hearing somebody respond, you'll say, did you, you know, did, does that make sense? You know, you wanna make sure that, you know, that communication is, is continuous. Now, if you're not the person who's speaking, and especially if you have multiple people on a call, like this, you want to make sure that you are muting yourself. And the reason why I say this is that sometimes people are working, maybe writing up an email or trying to do multiple things at the same time. I can tell you this, especially me, I'm a very heavy typer. <laughs> so if you don't mute yourself, you're going to hear or you're, the people on the phone or the people on the on the on the virtual meeting are going to hear you typing. Um, maybe there's somebody in the background who is sitting next to you. They'll also hear that. So if you want to make it um, a lot more clear, um, etiquette is just make sure that you're on mute um, if you're not talking. And then um, meetings don't always have to be formal. So especially in these times where we don't have that water cooler where we, or coffee maker where we all kind of come together and chit chat. So you want to, um, if you're missing that, definitely, you know, have those check-in meetings with your team 
so that you know everybody's getting that face time that they need. And another thing that I find very helpful is to record meetings if the team members are not present so that people can see it on their time. Um, or the other thing that I've found helpful is that I'll record a meeting, especially if I need to run the meeting and then I need to take notes and especially I do a lot as a project manager. So I'll record a meeting and if I wanna come back and be able to write up some notes, um, it's better for me to you know, worry about the note taking later um, and just uh, record that meeting and come back to it. So uh, definitely something to, to keep in mind. And the other thing I would say is give everyone a bit of grace during this time. I mean, everybody is working through trying to figure out how to do the virtual meetings, have their business at home, um, work with um, taking care of any home obligations at the same time. Uh, so um, I would just say, you know, give everyone, um, those who are meeting up with you, um, a little bit more um, flexibility um, during this time. So uh, just to dig a little deeper on some of the virtual meeting tools, I actually um, uh, pulled this from a post that the Chamber did earlier this month um, where um, probably Katie or Angie um, put together some of the tools that are available for businesses. So um, one of the, the main ones that people have used is Skype for Business. So you can use that for audio um, or video conferencing. Um, and there's a free download that's available. There's also, for those who are using Facebook, there's Facebook Messenger. And I don't know if you know, but there is actually a video component. So you could actually do calls and videos face-to-face um, um, with your clients using Facebook Messenger. So it's, it, it is possible. Um, as we're using today, there's Zoom. So you, there is a free version of Zoom. I'm not sure as far as what the, um, what the parameters on what is free versus the um, other versions of Zoom. Um, I know in the past it used to have a 40 minute um, limit, um, but now because of the um, COVID, I'm not sure if they've kind of eased up on some of that, um, but definitely something that to, to look into as well. There is GoToMeeting. So um, both Zoom and GoToMeeting have webinar support, so you can definitely use those um, as a part of your um, virtual meeting tools. There is a team viewer that's available for screen sharing and audio and video conferencing. And then um, there's Microsoft Teams. So if you are already using Office 365, you probably already have Microsoft Teams as well. Um, so it is going to allow you to do instant messaging and uh, video conferences, um, audio calls as well. You can do recordings. Um, and um, there's some things that you'll want to um, also look at as far as security, as with any of these, you wanna make sure you understand um, the different um, bells and whistles that come with each platform. Each platform. I also wanted to um, give you some resources and I can share um, some of these slides with you um, afterwards as well, but um, just wanted to let you know if you're new to remote working, LinkedIn has actually um, given a uh, learning path that goes through best practices on remote working, um, how to use Zoom, how to use Teams, how to, you know, all the different platforms. Um, so it is free. All you have to do is sign in to your LinkedIn account and you can go through the different videos that you have. I think there's about an hour's worth of different videos. So definitely something that you could use within your business or you can share with your employees to help them understand, you know, some of the um, best practices that are there. 
Um, there's also a checklist that Microsoft put together um, on uh, remote working that you'll want to um, check out and just kind of some best practices if you want to kind of share that within your business, especially if you're using that platform. Um, there are some, some nice um, information there. So if you decide to use something like Zoom, there is a Zoom best meeting practices um, area on their um, website. So go ahead and I've created a couple of these bit.ly links to make it easier for you to get to them. Otherwise, those links are like two or three uh, lines long, um, but uh, definitely go ahead and use these links and you'll be able to get directly to um, these resources. There's also, if you're new to Teams, um, there's a, actually a YouTube channel that Microsoft put together just on Teams. So you can um, have your users or um, you can um, get up to date on these items. So for those who are interested in virtual backgrounds for your, um, your meetings, um, there are some free Zoom backgrounds that you can check out um, from Canva. Canva is a, it's a online photo editing, kind of photo creating uh, website that I use often in my business. Um, and so they've actually created some Zoom backgrounds, both static, where you can create something like the one that you see today for me. I actually have it, I created this in Zoom, um, but there's also video ones that they've created so it can look like you're underwater, um, you know, di different things that you can utilize. So um, if you want to get one of those free ones, you can go to Canva for that. Um, and then I just wanted to kind of also throw out there, um, if you don't already have certain systems in place and you're kind of struggling with communicating with people, with each other, your, your different teams, you may want to uh, think about using some task management um, software that's available, such as Asana or Trello or ClickUp, and many of them have free starter, um, free starter accounts that you can use as sort of to-do lists that you can then assign to other people. Um, my company uses Asana. Um, we use that for project management. So if you're struggling and you're trying to not do everything, everything via email, um, you may wanna look into one of these task management software as well to help you um, with that, that management. Another thing that I would say is for those who may have um, services or classes or any sort of scheduling that you need to do, um, you may want to look into some online uh, resources such as Visita or You Can Book Me. Um, these are different ways that you can utilize um, tools that are available on the internet to then um, be able to um, schedule services. Like for myself, I schedule appointments, I schedule um, trainings using Visita. Or you can have somebody who just goes to your website schedule these appointments with you or trainings with you um, as well. And they integrate with software such as Zoom or such as virtual, you know, any virtual one. So just things to kind of keep in mind, um, different tools that are available. And if you have questions, you know, after this, you know, certainly let me know. But I think uh, this is probably a perfect point to just open up the lines to, um, if you have questions um, from what I presented today or just maybe just general questions. Does anyone have any questions? Feel free to unmute yourself if you have a question. Nita, I love all those extras you shared with us. I think those will come in handy. I love that. Perfect. And if you want, I can share. Um, I can sh I can share these slides um, with the chamber or anybody who you know send me your email. You know, I'll send you a copy as well. That would be great. Mm -hmm. 
chat said, thank you, Nita. It was very informative. Awesome. Okay, well, it sounds like you did a great job, Nita. Nobody has any questions. Awesome. Well, I wonder, um, I'm curious to know, you know, how people are working remotely today, you know, what kind of platforms they might be using and, you know, what, what might be the biggest challenge that they're having? I think I'm going to go ahead and unmute everyone. Yeah. So um, if you don't mind, can I start with maybe Chet? Chet, do you, um, are you currently doing uh, any sort of remote meetings with your business today? I am. Um, I'm uh, having some uh, Zoom or go to meetings uh, with, uh, uh, with my staff. Okay. Um, and uh, so it's, it's working out okay. Um, uh, it is, uh, I, I haven't, uh, I haven't been able to, or I haven't worked from home uh, before. It's, I've always had an office, so it's a, a little, uh, it's a little different, but uh, yeah, we're, we're making it work and uh, reaching out to my sales uh, force and, uh, and uh, having some trainings put on and that type of thing through the virtual uh, terminal type thing there uh, uh, through the uh, uh, web. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, 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 it's going well. Would you say the biggest challenge is translating, especially like for sales team, translating into more of this virtual, virtual, or, cause I know some people do more of the coffee meetings in person, you know, around town and then the virtual may be a little bit of a, a difference. How are you finding that? Certainly it is a little more different. Uh, and then I also have some um, uh, other groups that uh, uh, non-work related type of thing, um, men's accountability groups, uh, that type of thing that, uh, that I participate in. And uh, certainly it'd be better to be able to uh, be there and talk with the person in person uh, however, this is the next best uh, option that we have. Um, uh -huh. the, the only thing that it really limits us as, as salespeople, if we're used to getting out and talking with people and having that one-on-one uh, -on -one type uh -huh. of uh, connection, excuse me, I'm sorry. Uh -huh. um, well, then um, that makes it a little difficult. Like right now, there are several people that I just, uh, uh, within our business, we have to go out and we have to talk with merchants and that type of thing and it it just makes it a little different difficult now uh not a lot of them are um uh tech savvy mm -hmm. uh to where they can get on virtually and uh, even having the time with them or the for, for them to have the time to do it mm -hmm. uh, so it 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 makes it a little more challenging uh mm -hmm. so going from this and maybe into a situation to where you'd be into more of uh, telephone calls Mm -hmm. And how you would um, how you would present yourself or or get to the person uh, discussing things over the phone. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. my phone is blowing up, so I'm going to have to go and answer. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Well, thank All you right. very much. Okay. Thank you. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Thank you so much, Nitsa. Okay. If you want to send me that um, PowerPoint? I'll send it to everyone who is registered. Awesome. Thank okay. you, Angie. Thank All you. Right. Have a great day. Bye bye. Bye.